It helps when you turn the mic on. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Good to see you here on a Thursday. Um, perhaps a little confusion might have uh, been afoot, but uh, here I am, total live, in the flesh. L lots of fun stuff to talk about today. There was an, a chance that um, I, once, of course, uh, once again, will be tangled in my... <laughs> In my cables, but there was a good chance that you were going to hear some, some banging and some constructing going on. Where um, the roof isn't happening yet, but we're doing a uh, a range hood before that. So my buddy was going to come over today, but he got behind, and we're going to do it tomorrow. So it's going to be all professional like, but you got to do that before the roof, so you can vent it out and all that stuff. Because those uh, those microwaves that have the vents just don't work as well. How's everybody doing? Good to see y'all chiming in. Um, man, it's just been so busy, so much stuff on the table, um, but we got some fun stuff we're gonna talk about today for sure. Let me just say hello to everybody while you're joining in, um, all 59, 60 of you here. Um, I saw some folks that said it's their first time here. Good that Jack Smith finally got to be here. Um, it's cold and wet in Arkansas. It's it's nice fall day here in, uh, in Nashville, I gotta say. It was. Pretty nice this morning, for sure. Glad that uh, Doug and Michael jumped in early. Um, and Eric uh, says that he found my channel last week. And he thinks it's awesome. It's been a week with blues lessons, and he's feeling better about his playing. I will keep them up. He says, thanks. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you being here. Um, we got Paul. Uh, thanks for being here, as always, Paul. Um, Don Kinsella from St. Louis. Cool town, for sure. Played there. Uh, I can't remember how long ago, a couple years ago. Sam from Michigan, of course, great to see Stan. Steven Preberg, um, welcome fellow guitar heads, he says. Lawrence from the UK, Jason from Germany, tried and true. Uh, Jonathan Kroom, always like to learn new chords. I'm going to show you how to find your own uh, if you're so brave. We're going to do that today. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff. Um, BB Ninja will be joining us shortly if he hasn't already a little miscommunication he thought maybe I was gonna uh, maybe I was gonna take a week off but um, that'll be coming soon that'll be coming soon um, great just to have everybody Q stick 333 Jay Cooper uh, oh Jay Coop yeah there you are good to have Coop here uh, my buddy we did a little in-person lesson it was great Dave Matteo or Matteo Adrian uh, Frank Farley from Baltimore it's raining in Baltimore good good song Jake from Santa Barbara, love Santa Barbara. Oh boy, what a what a place! So beautiful. Tim Smith finally makes it to the live stream. Essie Nesbit from um, Ahoy to the Brooklyn Broadcast, folks. <laughs> Good to have everybody here. All right, so man, I'm jealous of you, Stephen. You got your coffee, brother. Um, I need to make another pot. All right, so I guess we can you can hear and see me and everything. Got the SG back, my buddy Greg at uh, Groon Guitars. Um, I have him work on the vintage stuff and doing the recrowns. The guitar was doing some of that sitaring sound where you play the note and it goes. So he took care of that by, by uh, making sure all the frets were even. We attempted a new 
a new bridge, but it didn't work out. We're just using the, the one that was on here originally or close to original. So I'm um, going to do a video on this, going to try to interview um, a couple of, at least one of the folks that own this guitar before me because I think it'll make for a really fun story. The story about how um, this guitar came to be, um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit today, but man, it'll be great to have him uh, talk with me. So it'll be fun. He'll, he'll talk about how everybody said don't paint it and, and this and that and everybody loves this guitar. And it just came to me and I was like, you know what? I think it's gonna be mine for a while. So here we are. But the lesson at hand, let's jump into that. So you know that I'm really, really a proponent of playing small dominant seven chords for the blues. And I sort of found a way to take something that um, my, my friend and guitar peer, Mark Letiri, teaches. And Mark is one of the greatest musicians alive, in my opinion. And he does this really great thing where he talks about seeing these chords as little pictures. And he'll take, uh, and he, his course is really great on jam play. It's uh, wonderful. Um, and he takes, we did a little bit of this last week, where if you know some of the notes and the degrees that make up a chord, you can start finding them anywhere on the guitar to make little chords. So I said, why not do that? You know, a lot of us love blues. You know me as a blues teacher and player. And I said, why not do that? So what we actually have is, um, I even got the guitar profile set up. This is what, uh, what you're gonna get when you download it. And what you're gonna see here is a bunch of chords. And I will, uh, I'll go back to that in a second. But um, I wanna talk about the concept, okay? So first of all, um, in music, a triad is a three note chord. And we know them, we've probably seen them like this, like G, B, D, or C, E, G or C, E, G. It's tricky on the guitar because there's so many options to play them and ways to play them that it's hard to commit to them. It's hard to kind of see uh, what they're useful for and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, but what Mark does is he said, okay, let's take um, the one, the one, the three, and the five, okay? So that's like a G chord, okay? If we took a one, three, five, and a, and a major seven, so you'd have G, B, D, and F sharp, you'd have a G major seven. Okay, so follow me on this. This is the background. Because we're gonna change keys, and we're gonna, we're gonna put it into a blues. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, what if we just took the root, the third, and the major seven, right? So those notes all exist in the key of G. It's a G, B, and an F sharp. It still sounds like, and I pull my finger away so that you can see that I'm not using that fifth note. The fifth note is you can take it or leave it, and we're gonna do both. So that still sounds like this, right? Okay? But let's say we play it like this, G, B, F sharp. That's a nice sounding chord. And it sounds like this, or this. But now, what if we want to make it a more dominant chord to use in blues? Okay, so look, we're going to take those notes again, G and B, and we're not going to use the D, that would be our triad, and we're not going to use that F sharp because that is a, uh, a major seven. But when you play a dominant seven chord, and I'm just moving my finger again to get it out of the way for you, you don't have to contort your hand this crazy. Just move that note down a half step, and you got a G7, okay? So that formula then, thanks to Mark, is, G, is gonna be G, B, and F, or one, three, flat seven. And you can hear that there's a G in the bass, it sounds, uh, like a like a G7 chord, because it is. But now we're gonna move it all the way down to E, okay? Now we're gonna take E, and we're gonna take E, G sharp, and D, and that gives us the sound of an E7. Now we can get that if we play that big full chord right there. Totally fine, great option. But let's just take that three-piece chord right there. 
and I do it second, first, and pinky. And that's gonna be uh, one, three, flat seven. Now what you do is you're gonna reverse that order. You're gonna go three, flat seven, one. So the notes are E, G sharp, D, watch this. Now my lowest note is going to be G sharp, then a D, then an E. So now we got two little chords. We just flip flop the notes around. You'll see this in the tab. There's the first one, root third, flat seven. The next one, flat third, flat, or third, flat seven root. And then the next one, this is crazy. This is where you're gonna see some chords you haven't seen before, I guarantee it. Now the next order would be flat seven, root third. Crazy, right? But when you play it with an E in the bass, it sounds great because it's an E7 chord. Cool. So I want to play a little bit and I want to use these, but what we're also going to do is we're going to transpose those. So if you have an E7, you can move that to an A7, you can move that to a B7. Same thing with all these other shapes. Uh, sorry. Um, notice how these sound a little more dissonant because the notes are really spread far apart. So it's a lot of fun, okay? Um, now let's take a look at the tab before I play. Now the tab, check this out. There's the first three. So I, what I did here is in the first, in the first three measures, I'm just gonna hear this. Oh, that doesn't work. Sorry about that, guys. Um, there's our first E7 chord. We'll go over to the next one. Here's the next one, E7 slash G sharp. And you can see up here, one, three, flat seven, three, flat seven, one, flat seven, one, three. And then the third one, D is the lowest note. And I'll show you how I did that. Now, I, even, I forgot I gave you this much. This is awesome. What we can do now is, well, let's do this. Let's go back to the chart. Not, not much of a plan for this today because um, I just want to show you these chords. But let's take E7, that chord right there, and we'll use it there, and we'll use it there. Okay, so uh, it looks like... Uh, Struggling to hear this one, y'all are saying. Hmm. All right, I'll turn it up. I'll do my best. There you go. How's that? Sorry, guys. I was teaching and didn't hear the chat. Any better? Any better? Let me know. Okay, let's try this. Hey, one, two. Vocal should be good. Any better? Those guys, let me know. How's that? How's that? How's that? Better, better. All right, good. Great, thanks so much, guys. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play those three shapes. play those three shapes those are new we talked about how we're gonna find them and let me put on this little E7 rumba here and I'll just walk you through it here we go oh one two oh one two three four there's the first one now let's take this shape for the A7 
right? So a bunch of new chords that I just found all over the guitar. And there's gonna be more. There's more ways to kind of flip flop them around. You could actually start to do even more fun stuff. So let's do this. Let's take those same ideas. Let's put it in a soloing context. One, two, let's see if I can do this. Here we go. Right? So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of weaving in and out of those shapes, but I'm seeing them as little landmarks, okay? So that's a lot, a lot of fun. And we can jump back into the tab here momentarily because gonna, there's going to be some more stuff, but you guys are chirping at me. Let's, uh, let's take a look and see what the chat has to offer. So good to have you all with us today. Yeah, all right. Bunch of new people jumped in too. All right. 116 strong. Let me wet the old whistle real quick. Yeah. All right. So we got Raphael. Thank you so much. Yeah, chord tone soloing. That's what we're trying to do here for sure. Um, Weps 20 says, so smooth. Thank you, sure. Uh, well, whoa, my knees hurt is here because rain canceled his work. Sick. That's great. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for um, you guys when you're in here, you're promoting the channel to some other folks. Awesome. Um, you guys are just ripping it. Yes, Eric, it is nice to have the Pelham Blue SG back. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna change the pickups. I'm gonna see what these throwbacks are like. I got these throwback pickups here. They've been sitting here for a long time. I haven't had a chance to put them in because I, I wanna do a whole sort of documentation of it. Hey, we got a uh, Music Muse Academy from Switzerland is chiming in. So good to have you. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thanks, Jack Smith. Um, uh, Garrison Boyd says, random gear question, but uh, what separates the light speed from other ODs? And BV Ninja chimed in, says it's very organic and it has good range to it. I agree. It's out of the overdrives I play, it sounds like you're just turning up the amp. When you, when you kick it in. And that's all I was using right there with the volume just under noon and the drive right about noon and the frequency right about noon. I maybe, maybe bring the frequency back. This guitar has some brightness to it. But when I turn it off, it's like almost nothing and I love that. So good, so good. Just makes sense. All right. Um, hey, Matt Gage, don't worry about being late. Just glad you're here nonetheless. Um, and Jim C's drinking already. You guys are talking about drinking, man. I haven't been drinking at all, I gotta say, and I feel pretty good. Um, Jason, don't mess with me, man. I'm trying to get these levels right. <laughs> uh, man, um, I'm glad that we, uh, we got the volume situation straightened out. Everybody chimed in, better, better, better. That's the best. No, you guys are great. I, I, um, when you start to change stuff around, I had, I had some sessions um, and uh, changed a bunch of things around. So that usually messes out. I, I thought I did everything today, but you, if I didn't have you guys, I wouldn't know. Um, let's see here. Ron Peterson, I was looking for you, man. Glad you're here. Um, 
let's see and other than that you guys are just telling me to turn it up which we did okay let's talk about even more um oh there's some good good questions coming in for sure oh new tuber guitars thanks for being back um he liked my uh my uh arpeggio video that's a good one i was on my game that day um so Scott Henderson says, good to see you here, Scott. Scott, I have, if you're the same Scott Henderson that's emailed me, I've emailed you several times, but your email address keeps coming back to me. I don't know why. Um, yeah, so uh, where, where's your question? So you were, you, were you using scales around the chords, or was that all notes from the chord? I haven't been drinking either. <laughs> P.S. Not Tribal Tech. You are the same Scott Henderson. Um, so uh, for me, it's a combination of the chords, we're basing off the chords, and then um, major and minor pentatonics. And I'm gonna do a video someday about whether it's, made, whether it's major minor pentatonics work or is it mixolydian. And I'm more of a singular scale, um, key center kind of guy. Um, because to me, I start to think, well, it's a D major scale over an A because of the notes in that mode. And it just gets too confusing for me. So. That's why I've never been a modal guy. I didn't mean to go there, but, but I, I think a video someday will help some other folks say like, wow, um, I, really, um, I really identify or I really connect with, um, with your way of sort of singular key playing. That's always worked for me. Um, so in that, I use sort of, I think, A all the time, but then once the chord goes by, I'm thinking it's respective chord around uh, too. So if we're E, I'm thinking, And I see that I see the E minor pentatonic happening here. This is all what we're learning today. Back. That kind of stuff, right? So use these little shapes. Make sure you grab the tab. It's the first one. It has today's date on it in the folder, and that's going to give you some of those. Okay. Um, now the other, um, the other thing that we can really talk about. I don't. I don't want to miss any questions. All right. So let me jump back to you guys. Uh, let's see. I'm glad you like it, Scott. It's good stuff for sure. Steven says that he appreciates the simple teaching. Some guys take the fun out of it with too much theory. You know, I used to be a take the fun out of it kind of guy, but then I was like, wait a second, why are we doing this in the first place? It's to have fun. So it's little nuggets and little building blocks to build a huge house. That's what we want to do eventually. Um, Jack, thanks for hitting the PayPal earlier. Also, by the way, occasionally I can get to you guys and email you and say thanks for the PayPal. If you're doing the PayPal tip, thank you so much. It goes to several good causes for sure. <laughs> um, what do you think about uh, acoustic? 333 says, what are you thinking about when you jump from the one to the four? Do you have something specific that you aim to transition? Uh, I don't have anything specific. It depends on the song. If it's that kind of song, um, I'm probably thinking, excuse me, I'm probably thinking, the easiest thing to think of is play major pentatonic over the one chord and minor pentatonic over the four chord. And from that point, there's a lot of other magical things that can happen when you go to the four chord. Um, not to just pimp a course I, I've done, but um, my hip blues course talks about the the two five one progression that happens sort of inside the blues when you're playing in the key of let's say A. If you're playing A. There's 
there's like a natural two, five, one progression that happens in the key going to the D chord. And that's more of the sort of a jazz improvisational type thing where you actually can kind of uh, lead up to that. Um, You can do little diminished ideas, working more on that myself because I want to teach it better to you guys. I want to make it tangible. The problem with things like playing over two five ones and diminished, if you don't play jazz or you don't play fusion or you don't play music that's really expressive in, a, in an improvisational way, it's hard to force that stuff in. Ultimately, you, uh, you sound like you're forcing it in, and that's not what you that's not what you want. So I'm always working on little ways that I can kind of make it easy. But not make it obvious. That was kind of obvious, but it's still fun, okay? So I'm often thinking the easiest way is major pentatonic over the one, minor pentatonic over the four chord, uh, two five ones going to the four chord is, is something fun, and then um, doing things like playing diminished or melodic minor, all these weird things can sound really interesting going to the four chord. But most of my heroes don't do any of it anyway. They just play blues. So there you go. But it's still fun to explore. All right, let's go down here, check the chat. Um, I answer one question and the chat fills up. So that's all fun. <laughs> um, yeah, Jason's got the fake book course and that works well for him. Um, let's see here. Uh, Eric says that Jeff Beck is a guitar god to him. Is there anything you could point out that would be helpful to emulate his style other than trying to learn his licks? Ooh, that's fun. Um, I don't, I love Jeff Beck. I I saw him at the Eric Clapton Crossroads show in Chicago and it was like 2010. The one that's, that's a really popular one, like John Mayer's Trio's playing. I saw so much music. I was, I was doing a, a, a thing for the Fishman Company when I was demoing for them and I got to watch a lot of the show, it was really cool. And Beck, by far, to me, out of the shows I saw, stole the show, aside from the, the end, you know, um, when everybody gets up and jams. Uh, that was really, really cool. And one of the things I always thought was interesting about Jeff Beck was that, you know, pick a note and just bend to it. So if you see, let me get, I don't know why I put my pick down. I guess because I was trying to do a Jeff Beck thing. So if you got an A minor pentatonic scale, yes, your bends are important. I think BV mentioned that too. Really get those bends in, in the shape. But any note that you want to bend to, try it. So that's obvious ones, but maybe you want to bend. So these little half step bends into where your target note is, like I would never teach somebody to bend that way, but I might say, hey, if you know you're playing an A, why not try to maybe go and hint at it from a half step below. So it has more of that fun lyrical quality. Yeah, that's my that's my I mean, story on that. That would be the best. <laughs> uh, hey, BB dropped uh, the the contest uh, uh, link, so you can still win, still enter to win that uh, killer green CE24 semi hollow from PRS. 
Uh, the guitar is it's packed away right now. I may do a little, um, I was thinking about doing an Instagram post, post of like, uh, So there's that, but what if we did it in a blues fashion? If there's something weird in your neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Right? Ray Blues Parker Jr., right? That would be awesome. Who ultimately uh, got sued for that, but I think that's uh, splitting hairs. I love Huey Lewis. But I also love Ray Parker Jr. <laughs> oh man, um, going back. I'm going back up. Mike Jameson, good to have you here, Mike. Um, and Luca Ab, just want to say hello from Italy. Thank you so much. Ciao. Um, do you have a video on playing different inversions over a chord, of a chord over one chord vamp like Bob Weir does? Oh, that's a, a really cool thing. Uh, I don't know if I have any thing over a one chord vamp. Um, hmm. I don't think I have anything off the top of my head. Uh, let's see here. Uh, go back down into the chat. I missed some stuff. Missed some stuff. Um, let's see. This is a bit off topic, but Wendell Pierce is going to play BB in a movie. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Corey Parker Jr. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Uh, you, hear, you hear a lot of people doing this scooping into notes like Beck for sure. Um, Greeny is packed away. Yep, I don't want to get too much of my DNA on that guitar. <laughs> um, I saw that that Jeff Beck documentary was out. I'm going to have to check that out. It's so good. I mean, all this stuff is so good. I, I love hearing, um, you know, because we've ended as lovers and all that kind of stuff. And I also really think that, um, uh, let me see. Where was I going with that? Oh, the there's a video online, there's a video on YouTube of him being interviewed when he's really, really young and he's talking about his gear and he's got platform shoes on Les Paul. And I swear that's where they, they pulled it for Spinal Tap. It's so Spinal Tap. Crazy. Um, so Ron Kretsch says, can't find the tabs for today's lesson. Um, it should be in the link that says free tabs and tracks. Perhaps we can get uh, BB to drop that one more time. If you go, it'll take you to, it'll ask you to put in your email address. Um, once you do that, you'll have access to a uh, folder and it'll be marked 102920 and it will be called Livestream Two Note Chords. It should be Three Note Chords. I don't know why it says that. So there you go. Um, it'll, you'll find it there. But I want to jump back into that. Um, Sean P. and Milena Brennan, because we've ended as lovers, they love that. Um, Kenneth Kennedy says, I think you're a great teacher. You've learned so much in a short period of time. Love your take on Albert King. Thanks. Uh, that Albert King video, all those, those videos have been getting a lot, of, um, a lot of action lately. People really seem to be into that. Um, I have another, I have a really easy sort of connecting all the, all the boxes of the pentatonic scale lesson coming out on Saturday. So if you're a new improviser, make sure you check that one out because it's going to help you connect all five patterns for sure. All right, so since uh, I think I'm caught up in the chat, if I missed anything, let me know. Oh, yeah, good por goodbye pork pie hat and the pump are awesome. Right on, Matt R. Uh, let's see, uh, where are we at? So we'll go back to the tab, because I want to show you guys something cool. So you remember how we did, we just did one, three, flat seven, three, flat seven, one, flat seven, three, or flat seven, one, three. And again, you don't have to make your fingers that exaggerated. I'm doing that. I think the guitar cam's working today. I think I got the, uh, I think I got the latency issue solved on that. So again, here's the first one, and I'll be, I'm working on a way to get some nicer cameras going on for this too. That's the first one. That's the second with an E in the bass there, and then the third one. Now what I would do is I would immediately transpose those if that's E. Here's your E. Move it all the way up to A for A7. Let's get that camera back in focus, sorry. It's a little cheap, cheapo camera. Come on. It's the best I got, sorry folks. There's A7, A7, and then another one is way up here. 
but what you could do is play it down here and you'll do the same thing for B7. And I'm going fast on these just because the tabs there, you guys can totally get it. So instead, let's go to, now what we're going to do, let's do this. What we're gonna do now is we're going to take uh, one, five, and flat seven. So here's another little fun chord you, you might not have played before. This is an E7, but instead we've removed the third. Now we have the root, which is an E, the fifth, which is a B, and the flat seven, which is a D. So we got that, that's a very usable chord. Right, now the next one gets pretty crazy. <laughs> this is a big old spread seventh chord. We have the fifth flat seven root. And it's kind of how, you know, we, we, I keep saying a lot of this was inspired by Mark Lettieri. You know, you take a band like he's in, like Snarky Puppy, and he talks about this stuff. And that's how they get those cool chords, really jazzy kind of fusion-y type stuff. So that's the, here's the second one. Here's the first one again. Let's change screens. There's one. Again, it's in the tab, so you should be able to have it. And then this crazy, stretchy one. So I try to make music as soon as I can with this stuff. All right? So then we got Flat seven, one, five. This is another really cool one. Just three strings, it's all on the uh, strings four, three, and two, mind you. And I have an Instagram video where I'm playing. All those things, it sounds so cool when you get them really cooking like that because then you have all these, you know, sort of new fun ways to kind of. There it is, there it is, lots of cool stuff. So let's take a look. Let's make sure we go to, uh, I'm gonna go to the guitar profile and I can follow along with you guys. So if you look here in measure four, when you guys get this tab, these will be the shapes. Um, and I don't have the, what we could do, this will be easier. Lickety split, watch this. We can go, if I remember how to do this, I'll have to redo it and resave it. Oh, there they are. I didn't think they were. Boom, here's all the chord shapes right here. Yeah, super easy. So that takes you through, um, Oh, sorry, I scrolled too far. Here's the first three, here's the second three. And then what I did is I wrote out a little blues in the key of E using all those shapes. And if you have Guitar Pro, great. Um, I think the file's in there. Also, you can just kind of throw it into Guitar Pro and hit play and it'll play it for you. But we have uh, from measure seven here, we have, uh, let's see. Uh, where to start, where to start. Here we go, it starts here on this one. Two, three, four, I'm in measure 10. Let me start again, measure seven. Two, three, I'll try to move the mouse with it. Uh, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, same chord. Two, three, four. Two, three, again. Two, three, back to the E7. Two, three, four, again. Then we're just gonna take this shape that we played. I know you can't see me right now. Yeah, so there you go. 
put some of those together. It's all the answers are up here in the top six measures. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, again, very informal. You guys got the goods. You can mess with it on your own. Um, it's a lot of fun. I think it really opens up the fretboard too. And then of course, like we're talking about, you can use them as sort of like, <laughs> ideas as well. It takes a while to get into that. I'm still working at it. Um, I'm working on so many different things like that just to kind of open up the fretboard and see it more that way. It's a it's a lifelong journey. But let's jump back into the chat. I always like <laughs> when I when I leave the leave the YouTube, so we have like a there's like if you've ever done a live stream there's a YouTube sort of studio. I can see the chat, I can see all these numbers and, and graphics and, and statistics and things like that. But when I leave it <laughs> And I um, and I come back. I'm always surprised you guys are still here. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so man, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much for having everybody uh, uh, hit the like button, subscribing. We had a we had a handful of new um, uh, subscribers last week, which I think we had a bunch of new folks, and I think that really helped because with the contest, we're getting a lot of new subscribers. It's awesome. We crossed over sixteen thousand. I can't thank you guys enough. It's been a great year. I've almost tripled my subscribers. I'd love to get to quadrupled by the end of the year, which would be 20K. Um, but if wishes were if, if wishes and butts were candies and nuts. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's been a great, I mean, for for this aspect of my life, it's been really, really good. This and and having my fiance move in and all that stuff, it's it's been really, really great. But uh, for a lot of other people in the world. It hasn't been so great, and um, hopefully these lessons help a little bit, you know. So, uh, let's see. Hey, Ashler, you're very welcome. My pleasure. Eric, thank you. Um, and Coop wants to know, peeking out behind the SG on the wall. That is uh, a pink Mario Martin Jazz Master. That is an awesome guitar. Um, love it, love it. I will play that someday. I played that on this surf track that I did. It was a lot of do -do 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 and I played that baritone, which was cool. Maybe I'll plug that in. We'll have some fun with that. We got about 20 minutes. Um, Jack Smith Guitar Pro is a software that allows us to write our own transcriptions, but there's a whole community that you can buy tabs for songs that have already been done, um, and you can add those in, and any tabs that I create if you download the guitar profile, same with any course that I've done, any tr any course with Truefire or Brett Papa, there's always guitar profiles. So they put the file into the player and it plays it for you. It's very archaic MIDI sounding, like a computerized thing, but um, but it's still really really helpful. I use it a lot. We were up to, oh 159. We're at 159. I was looking at Astrantic said we had 152 viewers. We just had 159. Last week we were rocking. The guys, I haven't been dropping emails too, and everybody's showing up. This is awesome. Nice view of the casino. I was playing the casino in the newest video that I'm dropping for YouTube. Um, and yeah, I, I know what you mean, Sam. Those chords do look very mand um, mandolin esque. Mandolin esque. Um, <laughs> James Munson, first time caller. Just got my first electric guitar a few weeks ago and your vids have given me some ideas to play around. Thanks, James. Thanks for being here. Um, the goal in 2021 is to be able to take somebody to my website and have them start from like the ground up up to like what we're doing today, you know. Uh, speaking of hats, where's my hats? We got our hats all hanging up in the bedroom and they look really cool. I just haven't broken up the decoration yet. Um, but I should be wearing, I'll be wearing a hat as the, uh, as the days get cooler. Uh, keeps the heat in. Uh, what else you guys got for me? Um, and Ashler says he's, I, I'm assuming that's, um, I've never heard of the name Ashler, so um, for, forgive me. Um, great name. I'm new here, so if you can tell me what do you recommend on, uh, more of what you do on your channel, that would be great. So Ashler, what I do, um, I mostly do lessons and instruction, um, and I've taught, I've put out over 20 guitar courses uh, in the past 10 years or so. So most of it is all sort of um, just basically tips 
for blues, rock, country, a lot of um, technique type things, whether it be hybrid picking, how to best, how to put you on a path to help you become the, the best player you can be, ultimately. And um, sometimes it's a, good, a demo of a product, but what we try to do here every Thursday is take questions from folks like yourself who are new, um, don't know me very well, and we can kind of see if we can figure out some things to, to help you. And with limited resources, I can only produce uh, you know, a video a week or so for YouTube. I do like to do this to try and stay in touch with you guys as much as I can, okay? All right. Um, hey, thanks. Always glad to have Susie in the house. Susie, this stuff would be good for acoustic too, by the way. I haven't forgotten that you're mainly an acoustic player. Um, these are lots of fun, and you can find chords with this, um, and, uh, with this kind of method. More stuff to come for sure. Um, you got it, Ash. Ash, I hope that was helpful uh, in that response. So um, Matt R. says, I was lucky to be a part of a group Robin Ford lesson last week. Very cool that those outside sounds are actually in the chords. Very true. Um, I want to, let's see, uh, I, lost a, I lost my, I want to work more on blues with sevens. I, I encourage you to do that. Um, and NewTuber says, what did you do as practice routines when you were learning, I'm doing scales and just starting to introduce triad intervals, but need to add some rhythm practice too. I would try to play rhythm to songs, um, learn rhythm parts in songs and that sort of stuff. It depends on what you're playing. If you're playing a lot of blues, um, you can kind of do whatever um, you can kind of do whatever you want against it. But what you might do is, if it's a blues progression, maybe each 12 bar try to come up with a new set of seventh chords or a new grouping of them to play as the progression goes by, since it's not, you know, like a rock song that has parts and that sort of thing. Okay, hang on guys, I gotta, I gotta take a little, little sip here. <laughs> Don't do Instagram, they'll just censor you. Nah, I haven't been censored yet. I think it'd be pretty good. <laughs> um, Jason, I try to remember individual people. You know, nowadays the handle, your handle is kind of like in the music store, when I used to work in music stores as a kid, I could remember the guitar the person bought, not their name. So the handle is very similar. But I remember you and Susie and Jim and Ron and Michael and, and Jack and, and uh, geez, we have uh, Raphael now, we have, you, we have NewTuber, we have all kinds of folks. If I'm Jim C, of course, how could I forget Jim C? Johnny Judd, oh, building a baritone. Johnny Judd says he's building a baritone. Nice, I'll plug mine in in a second. Uh, let's see here. Robert Swanson says, you mentioned adding in other chords when transitioning through a progression. How did you see the chords so quickly in your head? Did you memorize the chord number of each key or are you using interval maps? Um, I usually, if it's a blues like what I was doing there, I practice it just the way that, um, that I played it. So I might play, and this is what I wanted to show you. So we're gonna take that first batch of chords. We're gonna take one chord, and we're gonna take that rumba in E. That track is available too. It should be a rumba blues in E in the tracks. So, excuse me. So we had this chord, right? This is our three note chord, E, G sharp, and D. We're gonna move that to A. So there's my root note, fourth string, seventh fret, A, and keep, you know, keep my, my, be mindful of the shape. And then we just move it up two frets, or a whole step, to B, or B7. And you don't have to, just because you see me playing, you know, all over the place, don't think you have to do that if this is new to you. This is how I still practice. I'm just presenting it to you post-practice. So here we go, I'll play it. This is just how you can practice, okay? Practice only. One. Where's my count? Three, four, E7, again. We're gonna move it up to A7 now. You can do this too, Susie, on acoustic. Back to E. Up to B7. Okay, now if you wanna take the next chord, that's the, the next E7. And we're going to have to move that to A7, which is going to be right here. Then back. Then all the way up here. Then 
and it gets a little weird because of real estate. We got this. It's a weird chord. We can move it all the way to here. We could take the next one here. So, it's another good lesson in knowing that not all chords sound the best all the time. You know, in a situation like that, it's a track that has a rhythm guitar on it already. And it was probably, it was definitely me going like, uh, doing my best Robin Ford impression where I'm going like. That kind of stuff, right? And since that's already happening, this like kind of spread, you know, um, that spread voicing might not sound as good but it might sound good by herself. I could write a song like that. Okay, so it's choices, but that's a good way to practice because it'll get them under your fingers and you'll have something to associate it to. Okay, all right, uh, let's go back into the chat. Uh, guys, I should have had some coffee. I'm starting to fade a little bit, but I'm with you. I am with you, strong. Um, I want to get back to where you guys were. Jim C., glad you're still with us. Let's see here. Um, Jack, sorry to hear about your hand. Thanks for your service. Um, appreciate that. <laughs> Daniel Isaac says, I remember dogs' names, but not their owners. That's hilarious. Um, let's see here. Hey, Salvador, thanks for being here. Do you have any tips on playing with more feel versus just playing based on scale and muscle memory? Jeremy Baker asks that. Um, you know, feel is, it's a challenging topic because how do you teach it? Um, but usually you can start to kind of add some more feeling to your playing by stripping away what you, um, what you might know or what you might be practicing. So if you take that track again, um, or you, if you guys had enough rumba, I love the rumba feel, it's my favorite. Um, got some good tracks coming up too with rumba feels. Had a really great drummer um, make me some really fun stuff. What you're hearing there was a program, that was a computer. Still sounds pretty good. It was a person that, a com that was computerized. <laughs> but let's say you have, um, you know, let's just take that track in the key of E and we'll take our E minor pentatonic. But I'm gonna move it down to like pattern four. And I'm gonna take those three strings, which is strings four, three, and two. The notes are A, B, D, E, and G. And those are the notes that live inside of that. So let's sort of harness ourselves and let's try some things, okay? So let's try some spots to bend. That's a good spot there from the A to the B. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda tackle some of those notes. This is an experiment. And we're gonna see if we can't get any more feeling attached to it. So we're just gonna stay on those three strings. Thing I like to do, play a note once, slide to it, add vibrato. Let's try that bend. We're limiting ourselves. We're not going. musical. This is more musical. Now we're going to take, we're going to repeat that. Again, I do a pull off here. Slide 
with the first finger. So you can start to do things like bends in a smaller area of your scale, don't run this scale, play a note. That kind of stuff to me has a good feel to it. And then once you, I've taught this a bunch where you kind of start to link up things, and I'll do it in a video I'm, re I'm releasing on Saturday, is you kind of go, find your pentatonics in a more linear, horizontal fashion as opposed to vertical box playing. Okay, but you gotta learn the patterns first before you kinda rip them apart and start to kinda uh, do your bidding with them, right? Hopefully that was helpful, lots of fun. Hope you guys haven't gotten sick of the rumba in E. I sure haven't, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and Kalani's with us uh, and says it's important to link your patterns, absolutely. Um, yeah, and Carl Freemeyer says varying the note length seems to go miles uh, as well for feeling. I agree, yeah, for sure. Um, you're welcome, Raphael. Um, you're welcome, Jeremy. Um, hey, thanks, James. Um, oh, thanks for listening in the car, too. I'm live in the car with you. Um, thank you. Oh, Johnny, thank you for saying that. Appreciate that. Uh, can a, another Ryan Medora collaboration sometime? Uh, it's funny that you say that. I just had Ryan play on a track for me. She did a great job. Somebody had asked about minor blues before. There's going to be a cool minor. Uh, oh, Raphael, right on cue. Look at that. Could you teach us some minor voicings like these ones for minor blues? I could do that. Um, I did a really cool minor blues for Complete Blues Volume 2 that's coming out. Uh, volume 2 is going to be like, just think about, put yourself in like 80s and 90s blues, right? Clapton, Stevie Ray, uh, some, some more modern type stuff, fusion-y type of stuff, maybe a swampy thing in there too, you never know. But, um, man, I got these cool like sort of half blues, half jazzy type stuff, and I think it's gonna be really fun. And we're gonna do arpeggios, we're gonna do chords, all this kind of stuff, because to me, Complete Blues, the volume two will be uh, more of an ex extension, you know, of how we do blue, blue sort of in the modern era, essentially. It's, there's enough out there for, of mine that goes, even though that's awesome, I'd play it all day long. Let's expand a little bit, okay? There you go. Uh, let's see here. Corey, do you ever use different tunings? I read Jimmy Page tuned to dadgad for cashmere and I can't get my head around it. Um, I have played in some different tunings, um, but uh, not too often. Sometimes I'll do just a faux open G, like with the high string tuned down to D, but um, I like to have the guitar set up for that and I don't like sacrificing them that much, but I might, I might set up one of those guitars to be like open D and try to, I, I'm, I wouldn't say, I'm not a great slide player only because I don't do it a lot. I think I'd be better if I did it more often. Uh, let's see. So Bob says, uh, I'm doing your Blues Rock Connection course. Uh, thank you so much, first of all. Where do I find the jam track? The track for the co in the course or this one that I'm playing to now? If it's this one now, uh, there is a link in the chat uh, where you can find tabs and tracks and that one is called Rumba in E. Once you put your email in, you uh, get access to all of the folders, and uh, there'll be tracks and tabs. You know, I, pretty much everything I'm doing now, I just put in there, you guys can go nuts. So hopefully I answered your question there. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, by the way, in that folder, if you own a Pod Go, I got Pod Go sounds in there, and I'm adding those as well. How about that? Um, let's see. Uh, so Jesse Platt says, between me and Greg Koch, what great stuff. Greg is a great dude and an amazing guitar player. Um, thanks for mentioning me in the same breath. Uh, so Raphael, back to your minor blues thing. So what you could do is the same concept. You could, let's see if we'll just do it uh, off the fly, on the fly here. Let's take, an, well, let's take an E minor seven. Let's do an A minor seven. So we have root, 
Let's do root third flat seven. So we have A, C, and G. Okay, so that gives us an A minor seven. So we have root third flat seven. Excuse me, I'm getting dry. So now we have to have a minor third flat seven and root. Let's check this out, see if we can get guitar cam happening. There we go. So the first thing we had was A, C, and G. And it is uh, Gosh, I haven't played that in so long. So good. Oh my gosh. That brings back memories. Anyway, here's the first one. This would be root flat third seven, which is seven, five, eight on strings four, three, and two. And then this next one, because we have to invert them, start with the flat seven, uh, or sorry, start with the flat third, flat seven, and then the root note underneath it. So that's, that's gonna be 10, 12, 10. So that's a really cool minor shape. So now the last thing that we need is the flat seven. And that could be here. We have that. Let's do it on there. So we have the open A, that's gonna be our root note. And then we have a G flat third, A on the second fret third string, and then the E. Actually, that wouldn't be right. Sorry, one more time. That would be it, but it'd be really hard to play. It's probably why I never played that one before. But you could take that same idea and kind of go... So those little kind of things, you know, I'll, I'll have to work them all out and then uh, get them over to you guys. We could do that. That could be fun. All right, stairway denied. <laughs> and I'm back. Sorry, I had the blank screen there for a second. Um, guys, if you hit the tip jar, if you hit PayPal, thank you so much in advance. Um, if you're doing the PayPal, sometimes I'll try to drop you an email. Thank you. Get caught up in a bunch of emails and don't always get a chance to say thanks. So thank you in advance. Um, Let's see, uh, kind of new to your video, Wally Vera says, new to your videos and loving them, learned a lot from that Santana lesson. Any funk jazz lessons out there? Um, it depends, Wally, on how far you wanna go. There's uh, an outside blues lesson on, uh, on YouTube. There is um, some funky rhythm stuff occasionally. I'm putting more stuff out there. I'm kind of like taking a, taking a list of every time you guys, um, I'm writing down on the list a bunch of different topics. It just depends on, it's, it's, if I could do them every day, I would. It's just really, really hard to get the videos done. But I'm working on it. Um, there is um, some of the stuff I'm working on now for another course is going to be more of the sort of funkier jazz type stuff, for sure. All right. Uh, we still got 157 strong. Um, let's see here. Who else has joined us? Who else has joined us? Where's my microphone? There it is. Um, Eric Vasquez says, do you have, you have a great tone. Do you do any lessons on blues tone? Actually, uh, when you buy Complete Blues Volume 1, you get access to um, the, tone, the tone course. It's a blues tone course. I start with just a guitar and an amp, uh, and I add like a pedal to it. Then I add my pedal board, talk about fuzz, talk about other guitars, um, talk about a different amp. So we go from like my Fender Princeton to my Two Rock and about like different, you know, different types of tones that you can achieve. Um, so yeah, so I, I could do some tone stuff even more. We've, we did a two-part live tone series 
on YouTube, um, oh geez, a couple weeks ago now, about a month ago. That went really well. Part one went so well, we decided to add a part two. So check that out, it's on my channel. And don't forget, when you go on a YouTube channel, you have to find the, the button that, or the little tab that says live, and then it shows you all the live streams. So we've done a bunch of them. We've done a bunch of them. Thanks, Wally. Appreciate you being here, man. Um, and Matt Gage says, means a lot having something to connect to like the Santana arpeggio. Uh, I'm glad you, uh, glad you think so. Um, and Ash asks about exercises for some sweep picking techniques. Um, I'm not a huge sweeper, however, I think I can do it. Let's give it a shot. Let's see here. All right, so one of the things I like to do is if you're gonna sweep, it's gotta come from an arpeggio. So if we took like a C7 arpeggio, your right hand, It's this motion with the right, it's so important in the right hand. You kind of just down, down, down. And you have to have equal pressure on each, each note, each string going down. You know, I used to kind of work on that stuff. But I don't do a lot of the big, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I don't do that stuff. I'll often kind of grab the, the top string with my index finger in hybrid style, and I'll kind of do that sort of thing. But I don't, I'm not much of a big sweeper. I might do that. I might do something like that. Yeah, it's just not my, not my thing, but I hope that little bit of a lesson helps. <laughs> yeah, in any case, that's, you know, I come on here live, don't know what I sound like. Definitely care, but you gotta let it go. <laughs> I'm not the biggest sweeper and it's okay. All right, so you guys are, um, you guys are rocking. Um, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. K Porsche 2 uh, wants to know if I've tried the Vertex Steel String Singer. I have not. Um, I tried the original, uh, the, the first one they had. Um, there's a video of me playing that somewhere. Um, it's okay. Um, it doesn't really work for me because it kind of, I kind of beefed it up too much. Um, but there's plenty of things out there that will uh, that will beef up your strat tune. Strat tone. Uh, hey, David T. Uh, flew out of Nashville this morning saying hello from Minnesota. Realized it was Thursday, and here you are. Thanks so much. Thanks, Infinity Games, for joining. Um, could I teach three or four semitone blues bends? Hmm, that's a tough one. Maybe I could. Um, yeah, any, sweeping will help with... Um, with Clips of Dover, for sure, absolutely. Uh, I worked on that years ago, and, I, and I, I had the intro really good, but whenever I work on that stuff that's so physically taxing, I, it spends so much time on, and I, I, I leave other things, and I wanna go back to more tangible things that I know I'm gonna play. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't pursue it. If you like it, you should definitely play it, because it's an iconic song with a lot of great stuff in it. Particularly all of the, you know, all the spread triad stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, Q-Stick says, have you ever tried any of the coded strings? Um, don't like them. Really don't like them. Don't like the tone, don't like the feel. That's just my honest opinion. Um, thankfully for me, I have, uh, my, I never sweat. I'm like one of those, like I, I mean I sweat but not that often. So my strings stay pretty good for a long time. Um, I especially, I, if I had to choose, I do the coded on the electrics, not acoustics. I'm not a big, good, I just think it does, they don't sound as good to me. Um, now, music stores like them because they stay long, they last longer on guitars, for sure. Oh, real quick. So, we're over an hour here. I thought I'd get the baritone out since it's sitting right there. Why not? 
I've gone to the other guitar stand just because I've been doing stuff so much, need stuff that's uh, close by. So this guitar is tuned from B to B. So you have B, E, A, D, F sharp, and E. So if we want like, um, if we want to play in the key of E, somebody's playing E over here, I gotta play as if I'm in the key of A. So I gotta, uh, I gotta transpose. Yeah, let's do a little tremolo on. Extra reverb, that doesn't hurt, let's do that. Yeah, there you have it. So you start doing that, you can get crazy. Speaking of Mark Latiri, he does a lot of baritone stuff with octave pedals. Um, see if I can find one. I got a little box here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, got another cool sound. fun yet? You never know what wacky stuff we're going to do. <laughs> oh gosh, you guys are funny. I'll probably leave you on that. Let me take a look. Um, see if you guys got anything else. <laughs> it's shaking the room. Oh man. So fun. It's the same guitar, uh, hey, my knees hurt. It's the same tuning in fourths as a guitar. It's just, uh, it's just down a fifth. Let's see here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Johnny Cash, black and baritone, absolutely. BB, working hard. Thank you for your help, my friend. Um, yeah, I think this is it. I think we're caught up, y'all. It's great to have everybody here for so long. We had like 160, so cool. Um, thanks, uh, thanks Jake Vantager for being here. Thanks Ron, always glad to have you. Thanks for all the kind words you tell everybody about my courses. Um, and uh, Alpha Dog, thanks for coming here. Glad, hope you're enjoying uh, your Ibanez 370. That's awesome, very cool. I just love everybody's got different tastes with guitars. You know, so fun. Um, and, and Reverend Hellbilly made it, yeah. Um, and funny, Jim, you asked me about the roof. I have uh, my contractor coming over. He's supposed to come today. And he was dangerously close to the live stream. And he said, uh, I'll come tomorrow. So I was like, all right, so we're we gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a range hood, 
and then going to do the roof. So the roof's happening very soon. Um, I will, you know, I'm going to cut it short, guys, but um, sorry, Ash and Serenis uh, Serenissimo, we can get into some other stuff like that next week, but I got to jump off after an hour and 15 here, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be good to go. Um, metal roof's probably expensive, no, Jim? I don't know. <laughs> but in any case, we'll figure it out. Um, either way, I'll get a 30-year roof. Don't know if I'll be in this house for 30 years, but we'll see. Um, thanks, everybody. Appreciate y'all being here. You guys are the best. Um, if you've hit the tip jar, thank you so much. If you haven't, no pressure. It's up to you. But make sure you get the tabs. Make sure you get the tracks. Make sure you watch the replay. Uh, and um, we'll, uh, we'll, make it, we'll make it work. We'll make it work every week. And if you guys got things you want to see me teach on, feel free to contact me through my website. Uh, otherwise, we just kind of let it rip every Sunday with a little topic and go from here. I always wonder how long it's going to go, but uh, here we are another hour and 15 in. You're the best. See you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see you next week, and uh, we'll sign off. Have a freaking great weekend. Y'all deserve it, and uh, don't forget to vote. Okay, I'll see you. Take care.